Okay, so they're there for you. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Well, um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I was wondering how you adjust for number four versus is straightforward just dividing by number four first or? Well, that's seven. Now you're picking me up on oh. <laughs> what? Uh. Um, it's dividing the um, number of citations mm -hmm. of the paper by the number of co-authors and then calculating the h-index based on the number of citations you get. So it's an, an individual h-index. Uh, so it's kind of a single author equivalent h-index. So it's not like looking at the total number of citations and then dividing that by the number of co-authors. Is looking at the number of citations for each paper. So if you have a combination of single author papers and multiple author papers, and you have a lot of citations for that single author paper, you'll keep all of those citations. Mm -hmm. But if you have a lot of citations to a paper which has 20 authors, then you need to have many more citations mm -hmm. for it to be included in the H index. Makes sense. Thank you. Well, thank you for your presentation. In, in my case, I have a Web of Science and a Scopus H-Index, which is about one quarter of what my Google Scholar H-Index yep. is. And um, I cite both because of the so-called credibility of Web of Science yep. and Scopus. But when I look at the actual citations that all of those sources have, I see why the H-Index is so low. They miss more than half of yeah. my publications, yes. mm -hmm. so it's it's a great miscarriage of justice, really, uh, for those of us who, who work in the human sciences. Um, we were talking out in the hall about the incredible care which all of you and your colleagues are dedicating to bibliometrics. Um, for those of us involved in in, uh, in you know this micro level peer assessment. It really is the case that we need to turn our attention to the process of peer review, the so-called, you know, subjective process of expert <coughs> judgment. And we have youngsters in the room, so I won't talk about what we all know about how flawed that process uh, really is. But um, that's what I would like to see happen next: <coughs> is that there, this same kind of rigor that you're you're all dedicating to to the to bibliometrics or the dispassionate analysis of research productivity needs to happen at the level of, of peer assessment. And you correctly distinguish between this ide idealized peer assessment. I'd like to know if you've ever seen idealized peer assessment because in 30 some odd years of being an academic, I have seen nothing approaching, you know, really thorough and careful uh, peer assessment, especially at the institutional level. True, true. I've seen it happening for individual papers, uh, but it's what happened at an institutional level. Um, well, it's interesting. If you look at the book that I mentioned by Derek Sayer, which is a critique of the REF as a process of peer review, um, I don't know if you agree with it or not, but what he takes as what he sees as a reasonably good system of peer review is actually the American tenure system. And he argues, I'm not having much experience with myself, but he argues that in terms of um, uh, transparency of who's going to be doing it and whether they're an expert or not, and all sorts of things like that, it actually stands as a reasonable model for peer review. Now, well, being from North America, let me, let me just say that I, I think he's misinformed. <laughs> yeah, well, he worked in American universities for a while, which is the opposite of his views. But he, he argued that when you set up committees, you try to make sure that you've got people in them who are expert in the precise area that's been looked at, um, and that it's well known who are these people going to be, and everything's open and transparent, which is not the case with the UK rep, where there's all sorts of hidden secrets. <coughs> nobody knew what was going on, nobody knew who was assessing individuals working in universities and who was making decisions about who was going in and who wasn't. The records were destroyed afterwards. Yeah, I mean the REF itself, the panel members, were told by the REF committee 
that when they finished their work, they had to destroy all their notes because the ref committee at Hefke were worried about uh, being taken to court by individual academics attempting to show that their paper had not been correctly um, done. So they were basically told to put your notes. Uh, no, I'm in the audience, so I have some questions. <laughs> um, so it's not a criticism, don't misunderstand mm -hmm. that. I really enjoyed your, your paper. But I always see that the group of is compared with to Scopus and the Web of Science. Mm -hmm. Also, Google Scholar is not a database. No. That's a, we have to keep that in mind. It's, yeah. it's a link collection. Mm -hmm. It does not provide any metadata, yeah. like a database where you can uh, search for, like yeah. uh, institutional data, like country. Absolutely. So uh, if you compare here uh, the coverage by field, it's based on individuals. You have a sample. Yeah. It's not that you can search for a field. Right? Yeah. So people are not assigned to any. Uh, there are some, there are some uh, derivatives like uh, Scholarometer where you try to do that or Arnett Minor, but Arnett Minor, sorry, it's, it's, I don't want to speak about it. Forget it. It's so hard. It's so poor. Because, and here the uh, the the, the, uh, the problems with the web uh, uh, emerges. So on one hand, for instance, if I look at my personal data in Scholar in the Google Scholar. I find a lot of noise, non-academic stuff that is cited. I would like to get rid of that, but it's still distorting my, my, my statistics. So pages of websites that are cited, they have never been attended to, or reports, I've commissioned reports, I don't want that they are cited, they are not, they are not uh, academic work, actually, or my university spreads, for instance. It's all in the system. It's inflating, of course, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, social sciences, actually. It's inflating my social sciences part. So we have to, to take it with a pinch of salt. True. So uh, there is more rigor in, in focus on that of science. They have their rules. They select their journals and proceedings and books. And uh, we all know it. It's a university. It's a closed universe. Huh? It's a closed universe. We know that. Uh, we know all about the limitations, we know about the, the bias in, in the coverage. Whoa, 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 I wouldn't agree now. You know the limitations, I know the limitations. Absolutely. Don't go to the limitations. It's part of the audience yeah. does, but most of the, the public doesn't. Uh, okay, yeah, I confess, but at least uh, you can know it, but if you, you, you look at, uh, at Google Scholar, even if you're an expert, you cannot know it. True, true. <laughs> but I mean, talking about yeah, the, the, the public doesn't know. Um, my deputy vice chancellor research, who was in the life sciences, had no idea. He kept saying, like, oh, but your faculty is underperforming because you don't publish oh. enough. Um, you, your work doesn't get cited enough. You need to double your research. But look at the medical faculty. They're doing much better. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's educating yeah. the, the public. Uh, about the, the that's, that's correct. I mean, uh, Google Scholar is still an excellent uh, retrieval tool, so I cannot imagine better because you find everything, yeah. literally everything. But uh, we have to, but the statistics have to uh, be taken. With, uh, Absolutely. Sorry. And I think really, and we talked about that in, in, um, in the car, even I think, <laughs> it's like um, Google Scholar, I would say, has maybe. 85, 90% accuracy. For my record, it's more than that, but depending on the individual. Um, but it has 90, 95% coverage. Um, the Web of Science Scopus has 99% accuracy, for my record, but it has 20 or 30% coverage. As a social science academic, I prefer the lack of accuracy over <laughs> the lack of coverage. As a life science academic, <laughs> no, I have difference. Yeah. Point of view. You know, if I can, uh, the fact that Web of Science has, for the social sciences, our Scopus, twenty to thirty percent coverage, is damnable. It is absolutely an inaccurate source of information about citation rates for social sciences. So to say that we should first uh, um, criticize Google Scholar because it has false hits, okay, it has false hits, but Web of Science and Scopus misses true hits substantially. That is the bigger concern. It misses a substantial number of true hits. 
And it is absolutely the case that while experts understand the strengths and limitations of each sort, when you say the general public, you mean department chairs, <laughs> deans, and university presidents, as well as, as review committees uh, for, 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 uh, for grant publications. So Web of Science and, and Scopus actually do a grave injustice to social scientists and, in my opinion, should not be used for uh, the social sciences and humanities. But I think we need both. I mean, we need, uh, that's why I love the three presentations, because they're perfectly complementary. I come at it as a social science academic, as an amateur bibliometrician who wants to democratize citation analysis. <coughs> we need the cytometrics experts to tell us about the limitations of these analysis, to tell us about the need for accuracy. So we need both, but there will be always be a tension. I was going to just say that one of the advantages of the H index is that it is more robust than other indicators to the poor quality of data in Google Scholar because it only looks at the top publications of a person which Google Scholar will get right in the name. It misses out on all the rubbish down the bottom which you know, are mistakes and, and, and general things which have small numbers of citations. So H index with Google Scholar I think is a good combination. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, this is a point we come always back to the individual level. So if we talk about Google Scholar, it's always proceeding from the individual level. So if you have a task, for instance, if you would like to uh, compare research performance, say, I take an example from, from the sciences, but it could be also an example from the social sciences. But uh, for instance, if you have to compare research performance of a country uh, research in uh, uh, inorganic and analytical chemistry, for instance, uh, of a country with that of other countries, you cannot do that with Google Scholar at all. It's not possible. Uh, the problem is, of course, uh, if it comes, of course, uh, we have to make a distinction because we have all this I hear it in my, at my university, Wolfgang, use Google Scholar at the national level. It cannot be done. We don't understand that. You cannot assign individual uh, uh, items, I would not say articles, because it's uh, books, it is uh, everything. You find even presentation, PowerPoint presentations, if they are cited, you find them back in Google Scholar. You cannot assign them to, to, uh, to uh, affiliation, to institution, to countries, just to others. That's really a point that that is, yeah, that is uh, one thing you have to keep in mind if you use Google Scholar. You have to go back, you have to draw a sample, as you have done, based on individuals, and then you can say, okay, these individuals can be associated with a field, with an institution, with a country, and so on. And then you can make, then you can say, yeah, I, I can conduct even a, a, a large-scale analysis. Yeah? But uh, uh, the problem to, to use the complete system for a breakdown by fields, by countries, by whatsoever, is not possible. And that's uh, the problem with Google Scholar. Uh, we have to stress that. It's not a criticism, uh, but it, it's, a, it's a feature. But I think that is a, a major issue for bibliometricians, but it's not an issue for the individual academic. 99% of the individual academics are only interested in themselves <laughs> and maybe, and maybe yeah. one or two of their, their, their colleagues. But I, yeah, I, I do. Put. And the problem is, as you say, Google Scholar is not a bibliometric database. You have data on the author, you have data on the year of publication, not always correct, but largely correct. You have data on the journal, but that's it. You don't know the country, you don't know the affiliation. Um, if, I, if I may just take you up on one point, and, and I, I do accept the critique, but I also want to put another point of view into it as well. Um, the rubbish, there's lots of rubbish, as you call it, noise. I think noise is... Uh, noise, noise, noise is I, 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 I said noise. No, no, no. <laughs> Someone else said rubbish. Um, so there's a lot of noise in, in, in Google Scholar. Um, but then again, if you've written a report, as you said, I've, I've written a report for uh, a government department and that is cited by individual academics. To me, that report has had an impact. I don't care that it's not an academic publication. I'm not going to value it as highly as an academic publication, but if many people have found that they're useful, 
communication and outside right. of it, I think that's a valid way um, to measure impact. Yes, you are right, but the question arises, of course, it's not research output, huh? it's, uh, it's not intended as research output, it might be it might also be redundant because it's not only general research. Yeah, so okay. if, you, if the, the task is to, operate, to, to evaluate original uh, scientific research, then it is not. Huh? But then you and don't look at it as communication, but you might look at the citations. It might have an impact, of yeah. course. It the might have an impact. It generates. And then we have also some, uh, not a, these are not technical problems, these are essential problems, for instance, uh, coping with books. You mentioned one. Uh, that uh, chapters are uh, considered individual, individual publications. Uh, it's true if it comes to edited books, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, most chapters have different orders. Yeah. You can consider them like uh, uh, individual papers, uh, and they are uh, uh, cited separately. And this is one of the main errors, <coughs> not only in Google School, but also in the sciences, because in the book citation in this, for instance, yeah. that uh, I have an edited book jointly with uh, Henk Muth and Uli Schmoch, we have published in 2004, <coughs> and most citations to the individual uh, chapters written by other scientists are assigned to me, and to Hank, and to Uli. And this is a mistake. That's a false positive, and false positives are very dangerous. This is one point. Then, if we deal this book, we have the uh, problem that we have different editions, we have translations. When can we uh, book a second in improved, essentially improved condition be considered a new product, I'm not sure. And then we have also a problem with some uh, fields in the social sciences and humanities like law. The borderline between research and other types of different, news, different uh, this, uh, publications goes with <coughs> the same journal sometimes. Mm, yeah, true. So it's very difficult to distinguish yeah. between uh, service and uh, research. So that's a general question that cannot be solved by using databases. Uh, this is a more sophisticated question. But again, looking back at your figure with the, the two triangles, yeah. I mean, some of the problems are more important if you look at it from a bibliometrics information science mm -hmm. point of view. And other problems are more important if you look at it from yeah. a research evaluation yeah. perspective. But most people don't seem to be able to make that uh, distinction. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate about the uh, gender bias correction that the HLA index seems to uh, do? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, yeah, I, if, I just you, bias, yeah. if I understood you correctly, yeah. the, the HLA yeah. index corrects the gender bias that appears in the uh, with the other yes. indices. Could you elaborate on that? Is is, is because it's uh, humanities are more associated yes. to, to uh, women and yeah. then... To, um, I mean, the, even for the H index, right. um, there was no significant difference between uh, female and male academics. But because the female academics, we, we wanted to have one male, one female in each individual subdiscipline, but obviously some subdisciplines didn't have female academics, and some subdisciplines didn't have male academics. Um, and because the sub-disciplines that didn't have male academics were typically the humanities, and sub-disciplines that didn't have female academics were typically the sciences. So by correcting for co-authors, that small, non-significant difference became even less significant if you correct it um, for disciplinary differences. But overall, we didn't find significant differences between uh, the two genders in terms of research. Yeah, something we, we once we uh, um, conducted the study, it was a general study, of course, uh, we cannot publish it because it was really uh, uh, based on individual scientists, it was a gender uh, study, and uh, uh, it was quite interesting to see, uh, and also you have to see how to, to, to deal and how to interpret this uh, bibliometric indicators. But we found that uh, women are less productive, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, receive more citations. Ah. <laughs> yeah. But then we looked at, yeah, they are more active, for instance, in the life sciences, they are less active in engineering, uh -huh. and that means actually if you normalize uh, their citation impact by the field standard, then females and males have the same standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So you have to be very careful how you interpret it. So because it was also, for instance, in, 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 in humanities, in some of the fields like humanities, uh, theology, for instance, so you, you don't, uh, so they are unrepresented, they, uh, we, uh, females are un, uh, unrepresented, for instance, other fields, they are <coughs> represented a bit. And if you, you have to, to have to put it in a perspective, so uh, people make this can be very misleading if it is not properly uh, interpreted. So this is always my warning. So people are saying, yeah, Wolfgang, you are doing people make this all the day for 30 years already or even more, but we are so critical with people make this. You have to, you have to. And that's the reason why I address all these issues around uh, Scopus, Google uh, Scholars, and databases. Uh, you have to. Is there any effort being made to look at things like uh, scope of work or complexity of work and maybe using manuscript length as a proxy for those things as you adjust for co-authorships? I think in economics there's been some work to, I, I, I seem to be cool that there is a journal they, they evaluate journal publications based on the number of page equivalents of the leading journal. So they, they look at uh, the number of pages um, a regular article is in their leading journal and then we calculate it. But it's, it's very messy and very time consuming to do that. There was a recent study, this is a study you can take it how you will, um, um, which was commented on in science actually in the journal. It was a very large scale survey of something like 800,000 papers. Mm -hmm. And what they were looking at was whether there was an influence on the length of the title. And they <laughs> claimed to find a statistically yes. significant effect, which was the shorter the title, yes. the more, sign, more citations it got. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure whether the same is true for the length of the article. But uh, so well, my, my, so col my yeah. colleagues who are historians you know, argue with me all the time that yeah. while they may write one book every four or five years, their total page output actually so far think. exceeds yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then if you correct it for the number of authors, <laughs> it will also be a single author book as well. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. 